Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and X-Men 97 will introduce Captain America as the second half of the season answers the question of who ordered the Wild Sentinel strike on Genosha. And if Cap appears, it must mean we are getting a time travel episode arc that takes us back to the 40s, baby! So in this video, we're gonna break down the mid-season promo and break down how time travel could be the cause of and solution to all of Genosha's problems and why it's gonna be such a big deal that this show is going back to World War II, specifically when it comes to Magneto's origins. The best way to support new rock stars is to grab one of our X-Men themed shirt at nerdriot.shop, like this Storm Heed My Command shirt, or a new design we have to honor Gambit coming soon. Okay, let's roll the clip for this X-Men 97 promo. It's titled War. You have to get everyone out. He's coming. If only you knew the future we have in store. While you X-Men have been holding hands, we've been placing dominoes. You think there's really gonna be a war? <laughs> we shall not live our days wondering if we could have saved more. We face this as we always have. Together. Okay, so you may have noticed that this promo is a mix of footage that we've seen before in past episodes, plus a few new shots, but there's been some new audio that might be played over old shots, so you really gotta break it all down separately. Okay, we start with the massacre of Genosha, and the city's still on fire. It looks like it's dawn in this shot, maybe after the massacre, but things are still on fire. Thankfully, the Wild Sentinels attack was limited to just one city. This island nation of Genosha looks like it might have four or five cities, but as many as like a million mutants may have died. And they reshow one of the more heartbreaking losses, this random group of 10 or 12 mutants who get crushed by the collapsing bronze statue of Charles Xavier when Magneto knocked into it. Then Cable's warning to Madeline Pryor returns. You have to get everyone out. He's coming. Now he could just be Cable applying a gender to that wild sentinel and I suppose it does have a male voice. But this trailer implies more than one villain could have been working together to orchestrate this massacre. We see images of Mr. Sinister from the Fire Made Flesh episode as he says, if you only knew the future we have in store. This sounds like a new line but it is similar to a line that he said in that episode, if only Xavier orphans knew the future that we have in store for them. So there you have it. We. Who is we? Well, in that episode, it was Sinister who gave baby Nathan Summers the techno-organic virus that later becomes part of Cable's origin story, but of course in the comics, it was Apocalypse who did that. Still, Sinister in that episode hinted that he knew what this baby's future would be. Fools, you have doomed the boy. But then we hear this new line from Bolivar Trask. While well, you X-Men have been holding hands, We've been placing dominoes. And we see a shot of all of our trash from the season premiere when they found him in the Sahara Desert with Master Mold. But the line itself is new. He says, we have been placing dominoes. Again, we. Well, Bolivar Trask must be part of this conspiracy to unleash the Wild Sentinel on Genosha. In Grant Morrison's E is for Extinction storyline, Cassandra Nova uses Trask as a puppet in a plot with a Master Mold that's found in Ecuador to produce an insectoid kaiju Wild Sentinel on Genosha that looks exactly like this. But the question remains, will the season of X-Men 97 stay true to that and say that it was Cassandra Nova behind it all? Cassandra Nova is Charles Xavier's evil twin, or what the Shi'ar referred to as a Mumudrai, which is a cosmic spiritual equal who, in Charles's case, manifested alongside him in the womb and fetus charles defeated fetus cassandra but cassandra clung to life in a sewer and then returned in an adult form to seek revenge but trask has said dominoes suggesting a kind of multi-nodal conspiracy participants one colliding with the other and based on the clues that we've seen it seems like this is going to be a conspiracy through time 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 in episode four, in Forge's photo alongside the X-Factor was a shot of him back in his military uniform with Dr. Gottfried Adler and Bastion. Adler is a scientist who is revealed to have been worn and disguised by Mystique in a plot to create a mutant dampening collar, among other tech. Bastion is an antagonist associated with the anti-mutant Operation Zero Tolerance Task Force and later discovered to be an android composed of parts from Master Mold and Nimrod. Nimrod being an advanced sentinel from an alternate future. I believe we saw Bastion walking in the foreground at that gala in episode five. So Cable has clearly attempted to come back to this moment in time to stop the massacre. And it's such an important point in mutant history that even the Watcher is observing it from the night sky. But Cable was too late. And we saw his cube that Apocalypse stole from him during the season four Time Fugitives arc that we actually saw a clip of in that X-Men 97 episode five title sequence. Why did we see that? Well, they were setting it up for this reason. So we know Cable, back when he was baby Nathan, was brought to the future to some year by Bishop to cure the techno virus given to him by Sinister. And Bishop specifically said that he knew someone who might have a cure 
they're referring to Forge. And that is the same Forge who's currently kicking it with Storm in the present day in Texas as they are dealing with the adversary Cosmic Force. And we learn that Madeline Pryor has been experiencing abstract visions of the future as far back as episode one and episode three that we now know were in part Cable from the future psychically linking back to his mother. And the final three episodes of the season are going to be called Tolerance is Extinction and it feels like they are mixing Operation Zero Tolerance and E is for Extinction to say that Bastion was really behind it. We want to thank Geology for sponsoring this video but also to thank them for making sure we look camera ready all day every day. Geology is a 29 time award winning skin, hair and body care company recognized in men's health, Oprah Daily, Hype Feast, Birdie, Esquire and GQ. Geology's products use just a handful of powerful proven ingredients that have been trusted by dermatologists for decades. If you don't know where to start, Geology can create a simple and effective skincare or hair care routine for you. All you got to do is take a quick 30 second quiz. Geology can help you fight acne, reduce oil prevent wrinkles, combat dark or puffy under eyes, have smoother hydrated skin, and target signs of aging. Right now, if you use code NEWROCKSTARS100, Geology will give you 100% off their award-winning skincare trial set. You'll also get an additional bonus offer of up to 30% off one skin, hair, or body product when you add it to your trial. That's 100% off plus an additional 30% off. That's a lot of off. Just click the link in the description or go to geolog.ie slash rockstars100 to get started. So just to connect the dots here as best I can, I know I gave you a lot of dots. We got two different factions in the future that are working against each other. One team includes Cable and Bishop and Forge, all currently in the future. Cable has his psychic rapport back to the present day through his mother, Madeline Pryor, and Madeline has a past with the Phoenix Force. And we know the Phoenix Force can kind of see through future because the director of that 1993 episode recently tweeted in the past week, Larry Houston said this, that when Gene was scanning Cable's mind, he saw a long long-haired, not a ponytail, but a long-haired version of herself, and that was implied to be Madeline Pryor. Meanwhile, Forge has a cosmic link through time back to his present-day self and with Storm through the adversary. And we know that Forge, in the past, had a relationship with Bastion and someone he might not have known was Mystique, but was Mystique, and that was confirmed by this photo. And Bastion's creation was orchestrated by Apocalypse. Apocalypse also seems to be in league with Sinister, though, because Sinister seems to know about the future, but I don't think Sinister's actually in the future. I think he's just in the present, and he was visited by Apocalypse who gave him some genetic secrets about the future of mankind. And Sinister's like, I don't care about any of this other bullshit, but tell me more about those genetics. Now, I would say that Apocalypse might even have a new set of four horsemen that includes Sinister, Bastion, Mystique, and leaving the fourth one a mystery. Could be Bolivar Trask, could be Magneto. I'm just not ready to call Magneto a Watchman as a Mandius figure. And this would explain the theories that the Dr. Valerie Cooper that we've been seeing is actually Mystique, who's still playing a part in all of this. But I do think this season is going to revisit Magneto's origins during World War II, because we've gotten hints toward his past all season. He said never again. He talked about getting a drink at a bar in Germany with Charles. He's not hiding from it. But in the 90s show, they could never reference the Nazis or World War II when it came to Magneto's origin. But now this show is not hiding from it. And even in episode Episode 5, Magneto flashed to a moment when, as a boy, he was brought into a concentration camp wearing the yellow Jewish star that the Nazis made them wear. And this could all explain the biggest reveal of this war promo, the sighting of Captain America's shield. It's in the snow, and someone with yellow boots is in the foreground. Could be Cyclops or Rogue, I'm not really sure. Now, this would not be the first time we saw Captain America in the animated X-Men universe. He appeared in Season 2, Episode 4, Red Dawn, that was the Omega Red episode, in a flashback, but he had a much bigger role in Season 5, Episode 7, Old Soldiers. That's when Wolverine thinks back on his time in the OSS in Paris in 1944 when he's on a rescue mission to save scientist Andre Cocteau and Captain America is his backup. They fight Red Skull and the Howling Commandos help them. It's awesome. Cap in that episode was voiced by Lawrence Bain who also voiced Cable for a time and Bain actually returned to X-Men 97 so far voicing executioner Carl Denty of the FOH. Could he be voicing Captain America as well or is Steve Rogers the mystery role that Theo James is playing? You'll notice that Captain America's shield in the shot has some scuffs or scratch marks. Could be some scritchy scritchies from the snickty snickties of Wolverine, or it could be from whatever Black Panther was active during this point of time, because last season of What If established that in the 1940s, the vibranium for Cap's shield was supplied from T'Chaka's father. And with the Watcher appearing in both shows, who knows, it could all be connected. So I think we are going back in time to the 1940s in Germany, and maybe further in Eastern Europe and Poland, because that's where the Germans built the concentration camps. And maybe they're going back in time to save a young Eric Lencher from the Nazis and changing his entire destiny. We also get a shot in this program 
promo that I don't think we've seen before that shows either Jean Grey or Madeline Pryor illuminated in blue. That was the color that we saw one of them taking when they were fighting psychically back in episode three, the Goblin Queen episode. But the last new shot that I want to talk about from this promo shows Nightcrawler with these two sabers. He slashes at the camera in one shot and in another shot, he joins a Wolverine with Wolverine's suit ripped to shreds as they face these approaching glowing objects. But if you remember, the title sequence of episode five includes one added shot that I wasn't able to identify. And I think it's coming from these upcoming episodes. It was Gambit and Nightcrawler fighting alongside each other. And Nightcrawler had these same swords. So I feel like through time travel shenanigans, Gambit is going to be resurrected. Maybe an alternate timeline version of the Gambit. Don't worry, Gambit's not dead. Yes, it's about to get even more complicated on X-Men 97. But don't worry, I will be here to guide you through all of it, my friends. Our Easter egg breakdowns for the remaining episodes this season will now be coming out on Thursdays, the day after the episodes come out. I appreciate your patience. I know, I know you're gonna have to wait a little bit long for them, but we just have to give ourselves a bit of time to really find every cameo, every Easter egg, because these episodes are way denser than we expected. So thank you for sticking around with us. I think you're gonna like our video coverage for what we got. Comment down below with your thoughts on all this. Follow me at EA Voss. Subscribe to all three channels of the New Rockstars Network for breakdowns and news coverage of everything you love. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.